One, two, three, four. Alright, welcome back. It's some more grappling with the text. And look at this. I got a new pen in Germany. There are fountain pens everywhere in Germany. They have stuff like this at a gas station. Anyway, uh, back in action here, uh, grappling with the text. First Peter, chapter 1 still, uh, verses 10 all the way through 12. And the basic idea of this text is Peter's going to say, hey, you know this good news that I've been talking about in the first uh, few verses? Uh, there's other people who are interested, namely the prophets and also the angels. Uh, so that these things that we're talking about are not uh, are not our own exclusive interest, but in fact the people who matter are also interested in these things. Now, it starts out in verse 10, concerning this salvation. Uh, remember that this salvation is a salvation that's mentioned in verse 5. Uh, it says, Who by the power of God are guarded through faith for a salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So the salvation that it's talking about here is the complete redemption of our body and of creation, which was won for us through the death of Jesus on the cross. So it's the, it's the victory of the cross brought to its fullness in the resurrection. So that's the salvation. And Peter says, concerning this salvation, the prophets sought and searched diligently. Now, uh, what's so important... Here. And this is one of these beautiful texts that reminds us that the prophetic text, that is the Old Testament, is about Jesus. And, and, and this is kind of so fundamental. I, I'm always arguing with my friend, Pastor Ketchemeyer, that, uh, that everybody knows this, that the Old Testament is about Jesus. It's so fundamental that we don't, uh, shouldn't need to spend that much time uh, working on it. But uh, he, he's convinced me that this is not so uh, obvious and, and, and so basic that we can get away with it, that we have to talk about it uh, more. So we're going to mention it here. Now, the proof of this text, not only is all of the Old Testament text, but we can look at specifically three uh, New Testament texts where it's taught explicitly. The first is John three thirty nine, where Jesus says, he's talking to the Pharisees, and he says, you search the scriptures, thinking that in them you have life, not knowing that these are they that testify of me. So the scriptures testify of Christ. The next is Luke chapter 24. Again, uh, the text uh, of Jesus, and it's him on the road to Emmaus, and then afterwards, and, he, and it says that he opened up for them Moses and all the prophets, showing them that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer before he entered into his glory. And in fact, that's really almost precisely what Peter is going to talk about here, that the prophets predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories of that would follow them. So suffering and glory, humiliation and exaltation is what uh, the content of the prophets. Now my favorite, mostly people talk about these, my favorite text is this one. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 43, which is the preaching of Peter down at Cornelius' house. Because this text talks about the person of Christ, that the Old Testament, they testify of me. This talks about the work of Christ, but this text talks about the benefit. Here, here's what uh, Acts 10, 43 says. Uh, Peter preaches, To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. So whoever believes in Christ receives forgiveness of sins in his name. Now, if I were to say to you, if I were to say to you, uh, th here's, a, here's a, uh, the content of, of a letter, of a preaching, of a sermon, or of some text of the scripture, that if you believe in Christ, you receive forgiveness of sins through his name, wh what book of the Bible would I be talking about? And you would probably guess, I would too, that this is a particular New Testament book. But Peter, in Acts chapter 10, says that this is what all of the prophets preached. This right here is a summary of the prophetic preaching. So that, the, so that when you come across Isaiah, when you come across Jeremiah, when you come across Elijah, when you come across Moses, when you come across all of these Old Testament preachers, this is, is what they were preaching. 
so that the content of the Old Testament is Christ. Now, th- this is what the text is saying. Concerning this salvation, the prophets sought and searched diligently. They prophesied the grace that would come to you. That is, they prophesied the New Testament. Searching for who or what kind of time the Spirit of Christ, namely the Holy Spirit, who, remember, proceeds from the Father and the Son, what kind of time the Spirit of Christ, which is in them, pointed to when he predicted the suffering of Christ and the glories that would follow. So that the Holy Spirit spoke by the prophets, as we say in the Nicene Creed. Now, look at what the word that, that comes up twice already in the text, and that is this word, searched. They searched, sought and searched diligently, searching for what kind of time the Spirit. That the prophets uh, were particularly interested. They were, they were uh, engaging in, in study of the scriptures that went before them and of the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, who was predicting and, and speaking through them and preaching through them. They, they were intent on these sorts of things. Now, this is probably going to be the, the point of this text that we have all of these things in abundance. We have the grace of God. We have the account of the death and resurrection of Jesus. We have the riches not only of the prophets, but we also have the apostles. We have all of these things. And and do we search diligently? Do we seek them? We, we, We are so happy to look in other things, to let our interests be caught up by who knows you know whatever who's who's winning and beating the rockies or or whatever it is but 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 peter is showing and and indicating to us that the prophets had this extreme interest in the new testament things and we ought to share that desire to search into them so that we can delight in them there's just nothing better than this news about christ now the prophets as they searched you know what time will it be Uh, when these things will happen, uh, it's revealed to them that the time is not yet. For all the prophets, not yet, not yet, not yet. It's not going to happen. It's not for you. You're not going to see it. In fact, that's one of the marks of the prophets is that they were not yet. They were always directed to the future. This is why I think that John the Baptist, who Jesus calls the greatest of the prophets, uh, had to die before, uh, before Jesus did. Uh, so that so that the death of Jesus was still in the future for John the Baptist. He wasn't able to see it. And this is what I'm convinced Jesus means when he says uh, that John was the uh, greatest of the prophets, and yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him, because the least of the kingdom of heaven lives uh, on this side of the knowledge of the death of Jesus on the cross. See, In fact, I, I'm kind of amazed that as far as we can tell, only one person dies and stays dead under the care of Jesus, and that's John the Baptist. Everyone else he raises from the dead. But we all, because we are able to see the fullness of his suffering under Pontius Pilate, crucifixion, resurrection on the third day, we're greater than the kingdom of heaven. So all of the prophets were on the not yet side of the death of Jesus. To them it was revealed that they served not themselves, see, not yet, but you in these things, which now have been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you, by the Holy Spirit sent out from heaven. So uh, now you don't have the prophets, you have the preachers of the good news. That is, you have apostles, and now you have the sons of the apostles, your pastor, which preaches the fullness of the counsel of God, uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus. Now, notice that this is uh, by the Holy Spirit sent out from heaven. This uh, This is an indication... Uh, a, a reminder of John chapter 14, 15, and 16, where Jesus sends out the apostles and he sends out the Holy Spirit. And this, this great sending, Jesus says, as the Father sent me, so I also send you and I send my Holy Spirit so that Jesus has established the church in the preaching of the apostles and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, there it is. Now, we have one more uh, small little verse to look into here. Uh, Here, this whole point is that the prophets sought to understand this great gift of salvation, which we now have, so we ought to rejoice in it with them, knowing that all of their preaching was of Christ and the forgiveness of sins, which we now enjoy. And then, not only do the prophets uh, rejoice in these things, but also the angels. Look at this. Which things, that is, 
this salvation the angels desire to look into. Now, the angels come in here for a particularly interesting purpose, I think. We're reminded in Luke chapter 15, and this is Luke chapter 15 is the great parable of the of the lost and found. So the lost and found sheep, the lost and found coin, and then the lost and found sons. Uh, the prodigal son, we normally call it, but both sons are lost and found. And, and Jesus is using that to teach repentance. But then he says something interesting. He says, the angels rejoice over one sinner who repents. So that so that repentance seems like something, um, but what, uh, s- something humble, something uh, a little bit embarrassing. When I see my own sin, I, I kind of, you know, I want to hide it. When I when I confess my faith, I don't I don't want it to be out there. You know, we we rejoice over different sorts of things. We rejoice over earthly victories. We rejoice over. Um, birthdays and graduations and things like this. We rejoice when when someone gets promoted at work or whatever. But the angels rejoice over repentance. And this is, I think, the same thing that Peter is talking about here, is that the angels know what is important to our Father in heaven. Jesus says that the things which are honored among men are despised by uh, his Father in heaven. And the opposite is also true. The things which are despised among men are honored by God, so that the angels are showing us uh, the thing that ought to be our highest uh, desire, our highest joy, and our highest interest, that we rejoice in the suffering and the glory of Christ, which is our salvation, our hope, and our peace. Well, there it is, Peter chapter 1, verses 10 uh, through 12. I'm sorry I'm behind on a couple of things, like our listener participation game, so don't forget to comment. And I'll try to be back with the game uh, here next week. We, we're we looking for 25 likes and 25 comments. That boosts our placement on the uh, on the YouTube. So, uh, so don't forget to do that. And we still uh, have 15 more spots for our September trip to Germany. So if you're interested in that, send me a note. Oh, boy, would we love uh, to... Uh, to take you over there, uh, it's my favorite thing to see the place, the see the uh, faces of people when they're looking up the hill at the at the Erfurt Cathedral, which towers above the city square, or the ninety five theses door with his beautiful painting of Christ and Luther and Melanchthon there, with the open Bible and the closed Book of Concord, or all these different spots that we get to see. So, if you're interested, uh, send me a note, and let's go do it. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Everlasting is solid, Christian, and free because it is viewer supported. Your monthly gift of five, ten, or twenty-five dollars is the reason that we can continue to improve and expand these tools for online Christian outreach and discipleship. To make a one-time donation, sign up for the Lutheran Ninja Clan regular giving, or to find information about how to put Worldview Everlasting in your congregation's budget, click donate now. Jesus.